Boom! Shit in the game! Yo, big man, watch your scratch up on paper. What's this? Why is that? That's my receipt from GB. I just come from paying them. GB receipt? They fix your bill? Because I ain't got no bill from since last year, and I hear people still getting wrong bills. No, not yet. They're still working on it, but I'm still making my monthly payments because they're using light and water every day. I don't want when they get it fixed, I have a high bill catch up on me. But payment on what? You ain't even receiving a bill. Yeah, but you know every month you're using the water and electricity, right? Well, yeah. So you know the charges are adding up. Every month, I go and make a payment on my account and just make sure I keep my receipts. Bye. you better than me. I was trying to save that GB money, but I end up spending it on something else. You see, use something else. You might as well put that money towards the GB payments. True. It's like going to the bank and taking off money off your account every day. Sooner or later, it's going to dry up. I, I hear what you're saying. Plus, the company can't keep lights and water running for the whole community without anybody making payments. Think about that. Bye. I see what you're saying. I think I'm going to go down by GB and see if they could regulate my bill. You see, now you're making sense and it sounds like a light bulb went on. That's the best thing to do because you don't want to end up in darkness. You ready for our next game? There we go. Loser got to pay my bill. All right, game. Come on into GB to make your regular payments on your account today. GB's customer care representatives are available at the Phillipsburg and Kobe locations on Monday through Friday to serve you. GEBE, -E, the power to serve. At SXM, we're taking travel and tourism to new heights. Here we boast spacious check-in areas, 10 passport control points, comfortable departure lounges, and an exciting new airport mall. Finally, there's an airport in the Caribbean that takes your travel plans as seriously as you do. Princess Juliana International Airport. The experience will move you. Tell me how to wait a bit Tell me how to wait a more Tell me all that I should know And I'll fall Late night show. Hope everything is okay. Hope everything is all right. I'm your host, Andrew Dick. Okie dokie, kids. What's happening on the lovely Isle of St. Martin? We begin with the news of uh, to pass or not to pass. That's the question. Peter always have to show off. All right. So, the final report is here. We can breathe a sign of relief. The final report was presented to the formateur on Monday. To remind you, there are three components of the screening law. The first one is the questionnaire. The second one is the secretary, not the secretary, the uh, attorney general for the countries of the kingdom. And then the third part is the BDSM, which is the Secret Service of St. Martin. They do an extensive background check on the ministers, okay? So, all three components were finished, finito, finale, 
And it was delivered yesterday, which was the BDSM report, because last week it was the report of the Attorney General. Good? You caught up? So the final piece to the puzzle was delivered on Monday. Now, the formateur, Dr. Luke Marcelina, met on Tuesday morning with His Excellency Ajamu Bailey, all right, the governor of St. Martin. According to the little children who are supposed to be in school instead of listening to politics, everybody going to become a minister, which we already told you who they're going to be. Yeah? Okay. So, the question now is, what day is the swearing in going to take place? Scouts honor. We'll see. We'll have to wait. We don't know. It could be Thursday. It could be Friday. It could be Saturday. It could be Sunday. It could be any day of the week because the final component is over with. I feel like I'm breathing for the whole of St. when I say, Usa. 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 Yes, finally. So, this means that the shake-up in Parliament is going to take place eventually, as soon as the swearing-in of the ministers take into um, effect, the new members of Parliament will be sworn in by the Governor. The new members of Parliament will be the following. For the National Alliance, zero. For the United People's Party, zero. For the No Party, we have Claudius Boncamper, who's supposed to be coming in for Christopher Emmanuel, who should be the Minister of Education, Culture, Youth, and Sports, right? Okay, Kevin Mingret stays into Parliament because, you see, Kevin Mingret don't trust nobody and Kevin Mingret ain't going to go and make a fool of himself and then he ain't going to be a member of Parliament anymore. So Kevin Mingret going to stay with Kevin Mingret in Parliament. Then we have the Eurocep. Of course, its leader, Luke Mercelina, will become the next Prime Minister of St. Martin and who will be coming in? No, not Junior Rolox. Behave on yourself. It's going to be Richard Elbrug. He will be sliding in as the Member of Parliament, filler, seat filler. And, of course, Luke will be bringing his talents to the Council of Ministers. Right? Then, we have, for the Democratic Party, Krisha Heiliger martin will become the Minister of Tiat. Tourism, Economic Affairs, Transport, Telecommunication, you know, Tiat. The Minister of Ita. <laughs> Watch another show if to get that reference. Um, yeah, so she's going to be the next minister, the Tourism Minister. And who's going to take her place? Khalil Rayborn. Yeah. Go Khalil. I hope you're ready. I thought it was going to be the Indian dude. No, no, no. It's not Khalil. Khalil is supposed to be next. I think, Pete, double check it for me. That's what you're there for. It's supposed to be Khalil, but I think it's the Indian fellow, which is Kutai. Yes, Mr. Kutai is supposed to be up next because he was supposed to be the minister. And then Sarah was like, no, 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 young man. You almost had it. So he's going to go to um, Parliament. And then um, Sarah Westcott Williams made the president of the DP, uh, which is Marinto as the Minister of Finance, and then she was like, okay, okay, Krisha, uh, go and become a minister. Yay, because I could send your ass home anytime you get out of order. She did it to Theo, so <laughs> anyway. Um, then let's move on to the PFP. Yes, for the PFP, nobody leaving, none, zero. They said no, <laughs> they're staying right there. They ain't doing it. Ludi like, if we could thief. No, sorry, she didn't say that. But Ludi staying into Parliament. Melissa just loves Parliament, so she ain't going nowhere because she's not a dummy. Yay for Melissa. Yay. Then the last party of the, the two by four is um, so the URSM, the NO, the DP, and the PFP. So that's all 
So those are the, the members of parliament that are supposed to be coming in. Everybody else ain't getting nada. All right, so that's going to be the composition. Um, in some other news, I saw this flyer on... Uh, Pete, break it up. So I saw this flyer on Parliament website, uh, Facebook, social media yesterday, and they wanted to introduce you um, to the new members of Parliament. They do it every single term, or whenever there's a new Parliament, they, you know, blast the names and, 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 and everything about the new Parliament that we consist of. So, let's go down the line. First up, Pete, one plus one is two. That's Akeem Arinal, member of Parliament of the United People's Party. Land for sale, land for sale. Egbert Durant, National Alliance. I better become minister now. I don't have no time to be here. Why are you putting this thing last minute? This is impossible. This is impossible. We need change now. <laughs> it's raining, man. Hallelujah, it's raining. Oh, sorry, Melissa Gomes, yes. Oranya Nabofa. Uh, Wilders, we can't wait for you. We love you. I go be minister. Theo was minister, and now I go be minister. <laughs> yeah. I show off everybody. I go be minister. I better than everybody. I go be minister. Yay. Sellout. I'm just a sellout. But thank you for voting for me. I appreciate you. I'm going to be the silent, most silent member of parliament ever. Thank you for the salary. St. Martin, I love you. And yeah. I was Prime Minister, and now you have me here. I don't want to be here, but let me smile because I need to be humble. But I'm not humble. I'm salty. But you know what? Severa Jacobs, I'm still the leader of the National Alliance. Durant, you ain't getting it. Hey, Roland, know what you're saying. You're good? Anyway, I can't wait to be a member of Parliament. I, 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 I. That was my Spanish um, accent. Sorry. Kevin Mingret is just happy to be here, and Kevin Mingret um, just would like to thank everybody. Uh, Olivier, I miss you. I still vex. I want to become Minister of Brahmi and Oyugami here, you know, pretending to like Oyu. I don't like Oyu at all. No. Papa, I miss you. <laughs> uh, I catch Oyu. I catch Oyu. I'm the Prime Minister. I'm going to be the Prime Minister. <laughs> oh, yes. We made it, Curacao. Curacao, we made it. Conta, Conta, my swa. We made it, we made it, we made it. Ah! Say, Martin. Yes, Minister of Everything, TG Ban. You know, we run everything, elections and carnival. Consider it solved. Five-star representation. I don't like Anna Richardson. And I'm happy that I was elected and she did not. Therefore, five-star representation all the way. If we could just stop thiefing for one year, just one year, watch my face. I don't play. Oh, you don't mess with me. Red woman does run things. I remember founding St. Martin, and I never thought I would be in government with a bunch of set and dirty nastiness. Anyway, let me ask states womanship and say, hey, Silveria, how it is taking orders for me. President of Parliament, bitch. President of Parliament. And that was uh, your introduction to your members of Parliament. Of course, they're going to change because now the swearing-in is going to take place any minute now, any time now, anywhere now. So, obviously, um, yeah. Welcome to the Late Night Show. We have a good one for you. When we come back, we have some more. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Hey Martin, what's going on? This is boy Mr. Weezy and I come to you to present our 7th annual Mr. Weezy in the TV band Juve Ton of Yes, yeah, sponsored by Coors Light. You have your shirt, your blue stick, your cup to get unlimited drinks, your powder. Yes sir, we have a water shop. And it's only $25 per week. The first 100 sales goes for $20. And you get a beautiful tumbler sponsored by Compare. Let's turn up, let's have fun. You can get your shirts at JW3, Boots 53 and 54. Or at Hot Waves, booth 68 and 69. I'm from Jamaica, so Jamaican parents was different. They tell you things and confuse your brain at the same time. <laughs> you as a child, you be doing something like touch it. Say you're touching something you're not supposed to touch, and you're touching it. Touching it. She walk, come in and see you touching it. Hey! Stop, touch that, no! And you stop. 
five minutes past you gone and you're back in the same room again and you see it again and as a child you, you know you do it. Sometimes you don't even know why you do shit, you just do it. <laughs> she walk come in this time, but now she flipped the whole script on you. Cause she walk come in and say, touch it again if you're bad. <laughs> Good evening, this is my well, mom. Then why is she sitting on the front? Nobody wasn't here. So she can't say good evening when she comes in. Mommy, let me say good evening for Hello, her. miss. All right. Hold it down. I fear I care more. No, you're not telling her. Forget up. Get up. I them scatter girl I deal with. Scatter. Oh, no, oh, mommy, I'm yeah, my head. You know, send me a... What a cop? You want the whole of St. Martin to do my name? What a cop? What happened to Daddy Bear? Immigration. Where them? They come in. They go with all them Haitian and Spanish already. They say they're picking up Dominicans next. Oh my God. Hurry up, Daddy B. Anybody home? We're looking for my buttercup and Daddy B. Oi. Oh, hello. We're looking for the other. Do you know the people who live in this building? My buttercup and Daddy B, man. Yes, that's them. Oh, let me call them for you. Them, you know. My people and them. Put the TV on, man. They inside there. What's up, up? Daddy B. Just talk, just talk, my partner. Immigration, come there and check all you, but don't worry. I don't tell them all you have papers. We outside. Same for All right, but. Yeah, Russia. Ma, ma. You say we are fuck up tonight. Tell us something when you don't know. My like bad bitch, my like bogo. She like popping, she like zono. Let's see the chatting, do something with a chot on. No one, shy, shy, she have a whole road. Pussy in your mouth, make it come to your nose. Sinful. All right, but for night time, they my lie. You see me, see me. They believe, never say. No, I never, I never. And if you gotta get wild tonight, party in my house tonight. If you suck, give me a fine hole tonight. Why you don't know what a wild hole tonight? Don't the blue light be a try you. Wear the flex together with Fireball and Dewars presents The Village Chill on Saturday, April 20th at the Carnival Village starting at 8 p.m. Featuring live on stage DJ Prince, DJ Joel, DJ Blaze, DJ Alcast, DJ Saxter, DJ Siwo, Zone, Light and Dimitri, King James and the Strictly Vibes Band. And it's all hosted by Rummer. Entrance for the night is just $5 with zero visibility on deck. Attend and win tickets to Cooler Fest, Strictly the Best Festival, Concert X, Stay Get Dutty Fett, jamming with the NBA, UV Neon Glow Fett, Timo Live in Concert, and five, yes, five carnival season passes for 2025. Get a 2025 season pass ticket with the purchase of any fireball or the war's drink or shot. It's the village chill, Saturday, April 20th at the Carnival Village. Don't you miss it! Let me show them how we do it in a sim. Marcel, you ready? Rockstorm! Everybody flies go up! Caribbean Flag Fest, Saturday, April 27th, on the Ring Road. Gates open up at 6 p.m. Flags in the air at 6.30 p.m. sharp. Cause out of Anguilla, we got Exodus HD. When you say it, say it with your chest, oh yes. Out of St. Thomas, Virgin Islands, the awesome Jam Band. From Center Station, Rebels Band HD. St. Kitts, the new Vibes Band. Out of Sunshine City, St. Martin, the Skillful Band. From Haiti, T Vice. From Dominica, Triple K International. 
and more. Come and represent your flag and do not forget your rags. This flag fest will be like no other with music by DJ Vibes, DJ Blaze, hosted by Verse. Caribbean Flag Fest 2024, Saturday, April 27th on the Ring Road. Everybody flies go up and spin that round and round. Martin, get ready for a time will be happy. Sunday, April 28th. Sid Martin, get ready for one of the biggest shows this year. It's Sunday. Sid Martin's biggest wet bed. It, it all goes down on Sunday, April 28th. On the ring The Fed kicks off from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. We're going to fetch in the sounds of a cheese ball. I With Big Shaw, the Odd Brother, Mr. Oleasy, and DJ Ben, and on the deck, DJ Play, DJ Maestro, DJ Big Boss, and DJ King Kenby. Hosted by Dusty Sham and Super Kid. Along with more surprises. Tickets available via the K-Ban app, Levi's Boutique, Tech Hub, Digital Stores, Pitching in Studio, and SXM Promotions. Sunday, April 28th, on the Rig Road, for the Caribbean's biggest wet fit. It's back on Sunday. It's back on Sunday. Back on Sunday. This is not a con. Welcome back to the Late Night Show. Um, all right, now, uh, the Parliament of St. Martin, the committee, uh, Central Committee meeting took place on Monday where Atwell Erion went into Parliament to explain the debacle with Enya and why we had to save the policyholders, even though we had 3,000 for St. Martin and there is about 27 thousand for Curacao. Therefore, why save them? Does St. Martin win? Doesn't we win? Um, the members of parliament had some comments, they had some questions, and we have the highlights for you. MP Gums, you have the floor. Thank you, um, Madam Chair Lady, and good afternoon to you, Rifir, the minister and his support staff joining us, and my colleagues, those in the Tribune and those joining us online. Um, for right now, I have one question and then more um, just as a comment, so the question, I guess, uh, would be, let's say in a repentant fit, um, the parties that have brought us to this point with the Enya situation decide to pay back. What would happen to this loan facility at that point? Uh, not that I'm expecting it to happen, but I do hope that all legal and efforts are undertaken to get the persons who have brought us to this stage um, to financially feel some pain as, uh, as we will as a country. And um, just as a, I know that the minister answered it in the first iteration of the Central Committee meeting, but I still remain um, a little concerned with the structure for the resolution fund because it's, um, it's still, let me find it here, it's quite a duck. Um, in the Corporate Governance um, Resolution Fund Annex A to the outline of the agreement, the fund itself um, has a supervisory board and a management board and the supervisory board is going to consist of four people, two supervisory directors um, on a binding nomination from Curacao, one from a binding nomination of St. Martin, and one on the binding nomination of the central bank of Curacao and St. Martin. And um, they are then meant to supervise the management board. But again, from a governance perspective, four people to a board. I'm just wondering what happens in the event of a, a, a deadlock. Um, essentially, that's why normally it's three, five, seven, nine, eleven. If you want to um, continue to keep it at a at an odd number, so that in the event of a deadlock, there is a, a decision that can be taken. And um, if the minister could, I guess, explain a bit, because there was some um, confusion when reviewing uh, for the peak facility. I understand what um, what it, it pertains to, but I just. Uh, to make it clear then that, that this is um, meant to act as a sort of protection uh, for us going into it. Because again, um, we're going now into an agreement, which I understand 100% why it has to come about from a fiduciary responsibility perspective, um, but that 
many of the persons that are going to be on this management foundation, which is not the management board of the resolution fund, but a separate entity that's going to hold Enya Carib Holdings. And then under that, you have ECL, ECS, and ECZ. Um, uh, it's a very complex corporate structure. Um, and I just want to make sure that we are protected from what has happened happening again, because the central bank is going to have quite a say in who is going to be um, in these entities. Where you have the floor. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, Minister and your team, my colleagues, those in the Tribune, everyone, Bonsi Man as well. Uh, Madam Chair, I, I, I want to start off like this, right? Last week when we, when we saw the article come out, um, everyone was in a frenzy mostly in terms of the feedback that was coming to me because they were like, how, how does government get enter us into a 50 million year loan? And, and everyone was panicking at I mean, a 50 year loan and everyone was panicking that this outgoing government, this take caretaker government is tying us down with a 50 year loan. Now, if one of the issues that I have with the way that that information was presented last week was the fact that it was shared like, like fear mongering, you know, it was, it was to scare everybody. It wasn't to tell you the reality of the situation that this Enya saga is an ongoing issue that now a government that is outgoing and then the new government going in gonna still have to deal with at the end of the day. But what I was missing in it is a digestible way of it to be explained to us, to understand why this is not a loan. In fact, I was not happy about this kind of resolution because what this is, is what we often see in irresponsible financing, it's a bailout. It's not a loan, it's a bailout for collusion between governments, a regulator, and, its, and members everywhere else. Um, we, I can go down the list, but the point is made. This is collusion of bad business practice and government practice in the past. And here we are now finding ourselves where 30 year, we have to enter into 30 year bailout by our country and a 50 year bailout by the regulator who should have foreseen this stuff beforehand. So what I, I what my first reaction was, well, through you, Madam Chair, Minister, I mean, here we are cleaning up something, but how do I know it's not gonna happen again? How do I not know that the person, the stakeholders in charge, the person responsible for getting us where we are, meaning governments, Ministry of Finance, CBCS, whoever, um, that it's not gonna happen again? Like what, what, what assurances are in place that the new companies, once they're, form, they're formed, are going to perform well and be audited well, be regulated well, and then the central bank is going to do their job, and then government's going to do their job and not interfere and not collude and save people and all that. And you see where I get to this story of where we're starting today, because we're not getting the big picture of this dilemma. We are in a dilemma where now we have to clean up people beforehand who messed up. We're bailing out. And then what made me upset is the fact that here we are so willy-nilly keen to go bail out a company, and then we still had this, this saga with Tell Them happening. So why aren't we bailing them out? Um, and I want to know from the minister, what's the difference between the bailout? How can we bail out an entity that is regulated, shared between two islands, and a central bank shared between monetary union between two islands? How come we didn't bail out? and come with a solution to bail out our own government, own company, since we act as guarantor anyways for it. What's the difference? Because you have to understand how it's being consumed and understood by our community on St. Martin. I'm talking about St. Martin. So I, I, and that's where last week the story that came out in the paper was not a nice one because you have to understand how people are going to interpret this story. So I appreciate you coming today, Minister, to start, to start, to start, it's a start, to start to explain this country the responsibility we have now in a bailout. So you, you started off good, you gave us a bunch of, you say, gave us a bunch of, of math and all that, but we still have to approve because if I look at the article that you released, which was an improvement from last week's article, um, the article stated that parliament has to approve. Um, and so it, it was something that came out today and it said parliament still has to approve. So is that, is that true? Is that, I mean, I know my role here, so I don't want anyone to think that I don't know my role as a member of parliament. But when you see the article and you go through this document, you kind of feel like, well, you're coming here after the fact. You already signed off something. And what is, is our role there still? Um, 
we have a new government that's going to be sworn in, uh, God's willing, soon. And um, are they going to continue this? And if they don't continue it, what's going to happen? MP Emmanuel, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, and good afternoon to everyone, especially the Honorable Minister of Finance and his support staff. Good afternoon. I, I had so many to say, Madam Chair, Lady, but my colleague, MP, the Honorable De Weaver, spoke so much on the things that I wanted to make mention of. And to the Honorable Minister, I would want to say to him thank you, and, and, and I appreciate the fact that the documents received is in English. I didn't expect it at all until I went and opened the not so confidential document anymore. I, I don't know what has happened when governments has been outgoing, but it has get a sense of a little understanding that we finally get something that is not confidential. I mean, whew, you know, how much how much the World Bank paying to the central bank, that is confidential, but 80 something pages concerning this whole ANIA bailout is non-confidential anymore. You know, but I take appreciation in that, so I say, you know, Minister, I, I really do take appreciation for that fact. However, Madam Chair Lady, I'll tell you why this is sort of like bittersweet. It's, it's sort of like, 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 like understanding because you sort of understand why something needs to be done. But then on the other hand, you're like, in my opinion, Madam Chair Lady, to me, Carissa won and Sir Martin lost. To me. When I, when I look at it, Carissa won. And I want to explain to you why I feel that is what it is. And St. Martin lost. You see, Madam Chair Lady, like what my colleague made mention of, you see, Mullet Bay was tied into this. That St. Martin, look, listen, you know, you're going to, you're going to get this part of the patrimony that is in your island. You're going to get this part. If, if something relating to that was involved in this agreement, somehow I would have said, well, you know what? At least we can hold on to something that belongs to us. At least we can, at least we are holding on to something that belongs to us. Now, Madam Chair Lady, I listened to the Honorable Prime Minister when she said, we are, we are tied to the hip with Caruso. And that's exactly our problem. That there is exactly our problem, Madam Chair Lady. And this is the reason why. I keep saying it all the time, at some point in time, we as St. Martin I have to come to the realization that our concern is only St. Martin. It's St. Martin. Yes, the central bank is between St. Martin and Caruso. Yes, all those things is all fine and well. However, Madam Chair Lady, however, my disappointment here is all these entities will be created. All of them is going to be created. A new one is going to be created here. A new one is going to be created here. But who's going to have the oversight of these new entities, Madam Chair? The same central bank. The same central bank that had lack of oversight, that caused the problem, or have the problem to where it is today, that we are bailing it out, to use my colleague's word, Madam Chair, going to have that same oversight. What is St. Martin's role? And then when I listened to the minister, the minister said, in those new shares, Carousel is going to have, I think, approximately something like 96 point something percent. And St. Martin, I have 3 point something percent. I stand to be corrected on the percentage of it. And then it goes on to say that St. Martin will be paying 2.3 or 2.8 or 2.08 million. Right? The central bank will be contributing 50 million. And then the minister make mention about the goal. The money that the central bank will be committing at 50 million, where is it coming from? Where is it coming from? That 50 million, where is it coming from? Whose money is that? Because the central bank is generating money from where? Where is that money coming from, Madam Chair Lady? Because what we are seeing is the 2.08 million. But Madam Chair, five years ago, Five years ago, the central bank had no dividends to give to St. Martin. Yeah, we get it now. We get it now because you leave it and you put out your foot, so we get it now. But what happened four years ago? Four years ago, we got nothing. 
They had no dividends to give to St. Martin, Madam Chair. But you see what happened, and this is the reason why I said Caruso won. So to fix that problem, to fix the problem, Madam Chair, they have now found dividends. So, and that's why I spoke to the minister the last time, we are going to give you your dividends, and from your dividends, we're going to take this portion to pay, and then you're going to get the one million balance back. But we didn't get nothing. The dividends is mine anyway. It belongs to me. All of it belongs to me. I am the one to make a decision from that. St. Martin is the one to make the decision from that. Not the central bank. Not, 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 not to bail this out. They are making the decision. Not us. Not us. So we are tied into this for 50 years. But who, who, to the outgoing minister, Madam Chair, and to, to the Honorable Prime Minister, Pisa and the who tell them that St. Martin won't be tied to the hip with them for 50 years? Who told them that? And that's the problem. That's what I'm talking about. Carousel won. Because the majority of everything is in Carousel. 25%, not 20, 25,000 of the policyholders are for Carousel. Three is about St. Martin. Out of the 30,000 or 5,000, whatever it is. But I think it's about 3,000 policyholders for St. Martin. So the majority of it is for Carousel, Madam Chair with a central bank of two directors that had an argument in the past and in the future. And like what my colleague said, big mansion house on the avenue. No, 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 no president of St. Martin for the central bank had that. None. Madam Chair Lady, they were not the ones at the helms when this happened. Not one St. Martin, all. MP Roseberg, you have the floor. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you um, to my colleagues and minister. Thank you for your presentation on this matter. Also support staff and everybody here um, present and also listening online. Um, I also went through the document which was received on Friday. It was pretty last moment, but with my legal um, expertise, I was able to scan through it. But what I would like to get clarified is, and I think my colleague also um, asked it, um, I read the opschortende voorwaarden, so the, the suspensive conditions in regards to this agreement. And the, the, the most important part, I think, um, is that Parliament has to agree to it. So St. Martin Parliament and Curso Parliament needs to agree to the Hofleine Accord Resolution of Enya. So if that can also be clarified that that's the case. Um, other than that, um, I would like to know through you, Madam Chair, um, what the reason is that um, the law that is ap um, applicable to this agreement is the law of Curacao, and why not St. Martin, why that was uh, chosen, and also the, the, the judge um, that will be able to look at the case if it comes to a legal procedure is the, the, the court of Curacao. Why wasn't it, for example, chosen the joint court of justice so that all islands, um, and then also St. Martin, um, could file a court case in St. Martin and not let us go through Curacao. Um, that was also a question of mine. And then if I look at um, other detailed question is that I would like to know that um, based on my research then, the central bank has not been able to generate sufficient income to pay the dividends. Um, and what guarantee through you, Madam Chair, can the minister give that the dividends can be paid from 2025 up to the amount of the 3 million guilders per year? Um, and what happens if it, the central bank is unable to pay the dividends? I, um, how will this shortfall um, will be covered? I saw the inspannings for plichting, but um, if that is not, um, if they're not able to make that, what will then happen? Um, I didn't see that in the agreement, but it's possible that I maybe have missed it. Um, also, in regards to the um, the dividends, I uh, read that about 15 million will go to the resolution fund, and about three to St. Martin. And what's the reasoning behind this? And what part of the dividend is Curacao entitled to? Um, those are my questions for now. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. 
MP Roseburg, and I continue and give the floor to MP Gumps. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you. I just had um, one more question and one more comment uh, for the minister. And my comment touches a bit on what um, MP Emanuel was saying in his um, in his statements, where he asked about the sale of Enya um, to uh, private ownership. Then, and indeed, in the overall discussion, the Management Foundation can actually sell off the participations of um, Enya, so whether it's um, Enya Karib Levin or Schade or Zorg, um, as, it, as they become more profitable, I guess, but also it requires prior approval of the Management Foundation, yes, and the Management Foundation can only give approval after prior approval by the Resolution Fund, since the Resolution Fund is gonna hold the depository receipts. And this goes back to what I said um, regarding the governance of the Resolution Fund. Four people, um, Two from Curacao, one from the central bank, which MP Emanuel is not wrong, can also, will probably be someone from Curacao, um, and one from St. Martin. If they're at a deadlock to sell one of the participations, what then? So just from a governance perspective, I really want to understand the logic um, and the reasoning behind this four-man um, supervisory board that, can have to, that has to give their approval first before the Management Foundation can sell. And also, maybe a touchy question, um, is there a written or unspoken agreement that persons that had a hand in bringing us here are forbidden to be one of these supervisory directors? Because if I see certain persons who I know were part of the advisory committee in Curacao on this matter, um, as part of that, anyway. Um, so that's number one. And um, number two, uh, what at the end of the agreement it's mentioned, as is with normal with these types of deals, that uh, it's subject to regulatory approval. So I believe that um, as this progresses, there have been discussions with the reg relevant regulatory bodies. I did see that Aruba Central Bank has not yet really given approval for the transfer of the post-emergency liabilities and other assets from the Aruba section um, to be transferred. So. What happens if for some reason a regulatory body holds back the execution of this facility? Um, what happens to the interest rate and the finance loans that we have been made to understand are contingent on this um, facility and this um, solution? So that's it for me for now, Madam Chair, and I thank you very much. Good afternoon. Minister, I have only a few uh, questions for you. The first question I have is if there has been other ways that has been explored to see if we could have a pension regulation for the only 3,000 uh, clients that were affiliated to the Enya insurance company. So actually it's only 3,000. My question is all of a sudden everybody rushed, as my colleague members of parliament said, to rush to sign a resolution for the survival of Enya. While, as Mr. MP Emmanuel said, we are losers in this deal. And what is the reason that we rushed still in the direction of an organization that has, been, has proven to fail in guaranteeing continuity for the people of St. Martin? I do not understand the agenda that we all rushed into trying to save a Enya that actually was not beneficial for the people of St. Martin. That's the first question. Secondly, uh, the Central Bank of Curaçao and St. Martin had for a few years the oversight over INIA. My question is now, who is now overseeing the functioning of the Central Bank of Curaçao and St. Martin in these cases? So we, everybody realized that the controlling function of the Central Bank and oversight function has failed. This same central bank now is dictating to us in big pictures in the newspaper how we have to sign a resolution for everybody to get out of the problems. But who is in this organization now, in this structure in which central bank is a, is a partner, who is now keeping the central bank of Curaçao and St. Martin accountable 
for what has happened in their agreed function to oversee what was going on in the ANIA for a few years. Do we have as Minister of Finance, for example, a authority to question the functioning of the Central Bank of Curacao and St. Martin in this case? A third question I have is the, the role of the Parliament of St. Martin. Can the Minister, through Madam Chair, explain me what the value is of the signed resolution in a country that your parliament that carries the government in case disagrees with has, what has been done in signing a resolution without approval of parliament. What does that mean? That something that actually is going to commit the country for the coming 30 years at least. What is now the role of parliament as is stated that parliament must agree to carry this resolution? What will be the case if Parliament disagrees with a document that has, has already been signed? I'm a little worried with the commitment of Enya as such to continue trying to look in that direction to give continuity to financial aid in, for example, pensions for the people of St. Martin. And why do I say that? In 2021, a settlement agreement has been made with the workers of the towers via uh, the Sun Resorts that is also from that angle of the owners. And until today, in that settlement agreement of 2021 for the workers of towers, no penny has been paid to the workers and again, although the fact that we have been in deficit in our responsibility to pay out the agreement that has been made with the workers of the towers in 2021, today we are running to the same group of people again, keeping them alive, hoping that they're going to keep up their agreement that they made in this resolution. So for everybody to think that we still have the workers of the towers still waiting on the commitment that has been made in 2021 for the settlement that has been made for them that until today has not been paid. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair, lady. I, um, I, did, I did President Hayes, but I figured I might as well just clarify a couple things um, here with it because I know that um, Malabi was brought up uh, again and we, I'm, you know, I'm referring to this as an asset that was put up, a portion of it was put up for sale to see if they can kind of get some monies back to to do this and yeah, sort of bailout to make everything less, right? And I believe what, whoever they are trying to uh, get money back from, um, if, if that, if I think that might be ongoing. Um, but the, the main thing that I'm trying to get at here is part of this whole Court case and saga um, also resulted, I believe, in a new appraisal being done that was impartial about the property. And I would like to know um, if if that is in case the deed when it comes to like right of first refusal or if St. Martin has any preference to say what they want to do with that property before it goes to be split up between off-island parties like Central Bank uh, or you know the government of Curacao, Curacao, Curacao's portion and us. So I know I brought it up beforehand, but I would like a little bit more clarification on is the minister aware of this new appraisal that was done and whether or not um, St. Martin has been considered to uh, if a provision has been made in this agreement or in the discussion with all the parties involved in this agreement that St. Martin would have right of first refusal to do what we wanna do with a property that is on our island, as opposed to letting anything happen with it without trying to protect what belongs to us. And I am very well aware that this was a privately owned property. Um, previous times when 
there has been discussions on this floor for St. Martin to take back land and, and, and purchase Mala Bay. Sometimes I kind of felt like when that discussion started, it wasn't done with the intention of giving it back to the people um, in a nice way. It was done to see, to do exactly what's happening now on Mala Bay, is to, to basically develop it and give it off to different people uh, and have you know uh, jet skis in the water and more restaurants and stuff added on. So I really mean that is there an overall big plan of action for what we envision as the best thing for our people with Mala Bay? And if the minister is aware of the appraisal being done, that was impartial. Thank you, Madam Chair. Minister, you have confirmed, and I picked that up from the article in the document, that one of the approvals to be sought is from Parliament. And thus, this meeting being a continuation of a meeting that started in September last year, I would like to ask you, when is this matter going to be officially submitted to Parliament for Parliament to then handle it? Minister, I think my next question ties into a question asked by MP Jacobs, but I want to be a little more specific about it. If the ministry and the minister can outline in numbers this solution versus what would have been the case had we not reached a solution. In other words, the higher interest that we would have to pay in numbers, how that compares over the entire period of time with the um, with this solution. So the solution now, as well as what it would have meant if we did not have a solution and would have had to pay the higher interest for loans with the Netherlands over the entire period of time. The minister referred to the approval, for the lack of a better word, by CFT, as well as the agreement of the Dutch government for this new found solution. New found solution because as we all know, there was a previous solution on the table and that was at, the, at that time rejected by Curacao. And my question in connection therewith is, um, how has been the official communication from the Dutch government versus um, via, sorry, the state secretary? And if that, if it was in official written communication, can that be shared with the Parliament of St. Martin? To the minister, the, in the answers provided to questions asked by members of Parliament before the members of the supervisory board from St. Martin were mentioned by name with the annex that on nomination. Has the nomination of these board members in the meantime been ratified? If not, why not? Why is it taking so long that these persons have been nominated and their nomination has not, at least by the time we got that letter from the minister, were still on nomination, using the words in the letter by the minister? All right, it's time for our uh, carnival time, carnival segment, of course. Um, we love, we, carnival. Um, the village will be opening Friday. They have a road march show. Yes, a road march show. And then Saturday, breakfast time. You see the schedule rolling, rolling. Hey, carnival is here, people. Let me go, let me go. It's carnival all month on the late night show. And uh, we are excited. Um, Shocks Media, of course, late night, and Great Bay Media. Yes, all right. We're going to be in the village. Make sure you check us out. We have very, 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 very good prices when it comes to our um, advertising. Uh, so, boot holders, stakeholders in Caraval, we're here for you. Yes. Let's go to our nice um, recap of Carnival. I think 2023. Thank <laughs> you. 
Of course, we are here with the newly crowned Road March King for 2023. How are you feeling, Joao? Ah, uh, well, words can't explain. I want to say a special thanks to the Bacchanal Band, to my fellows, Lord Jesus, 
my beautiful wife, Romerick, the, the dancers, everybody that helped me to put this thing together. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been a hard road, but Chihuahua is a man who would push, so I know someday, somehow, something's right. Of course, what you want to say to all the revelers for the rest of the carnival, of course, they're going to be hearing your song over and over now, <laughs> more than ever. <laughs> we're going by the chuck now, we're going to end the real night. We're going, we want to take on the two crowns tonight. Tonight, tonight is the night. Thank you, everybody. Bless. Congratulations. Thank you. That was a Friday Night Show. Thank you so much for watching. Until tomorrow, do have a safe and pleasant one. Of course, don't forget, subscribe on our YouTube channel. Subscribe, like, share. <laughs> yes. And if you do that, uh, I'll do some TikTok dances. Never in your life. What? No.